here is a poem that comes directly out of my boyhood in Detroit, and it's called Those Winter Sundays. Sundays, too, my father got up early and put his clothes on in the blue-black cold. Then, with cracked hands that ached from labor in the weekday weather, made bank fires blaze. No one ever thanked him. I'd wake and hear the coal splintering breaking. When the rooms were warm, he'd call. And slowly, I would rise and dress, fearing the chronic angers of that house, speaking indifferently to him who had driven out the coal, and polish my good shoes as well. What did I know? What did I know of love's austere and lonely offices? Robert Hayden, I think, is one of the major poets of our time. He is a fascinating figure because uh, he represents the world of early Detroit, Detroit in the teens and 20s of the 20th century, and all the way through the Depression, through the war, the aftermath of the war, um, the, uh, the life that people lived uh, in the 50s and 60s. Uh, of course, he was a chronicler of the Civil Rights Movement. And there are so many areas in which he has written beautifully, written compellingly. What is it about his works that makes him so intriguing? Well, I think one of the attractive features is that all of his poems are written in different styles, in different voices, uh, in different forms and techniques. He was very deliberate about this from the very beginning. Although his, his oeuvre is really only 200 pages. And of course we know that there are many poets out there who write uh, 200 pages every year. And uh, Hayden was not one of those. He took infinite pains writing each poem. Uh, he put them through many, many revisions. And sometimes uh, at the end of that process, he threw out the poem. Or he didn't publish it. You were a colleague of his. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, can you talk to me a little bit more about that, about when you started working with him? and? Just maybe describe him more on a personal level. We talked sort of a lot about poetry. We had very similar ideas about what was important in poetry. And of course that was a bonding. Um, he had gone through, again, decades of relative neglect. Uh, he had never had, up until 1970, a uh, New York publisher that was willing to advertise and distribute his work. I mean, there was hostility. Uh, even among African-American poets toward him. This is something that he has spoken about in many interviews uh, where uh, members of what was then called the Black Arts Movement were resentful of him because he did not write political protest poetry, at least he did not protest as angrily as they wanted him to do. So uh, he felt like he was uh, on the margins of the literary scene and he resented this because he could see that poets who were, objectively speaking, not as interesting as he was, were getting awards, they were getting uh, appointments uh, at uni major universities, um, and uh, he was being neglected. But all of that changed. Uh, I think in the 60s, uh, there was a lot more attention paid to him because he had written these groundbreaking works about African-American history. When it is finally ours, this freedom, this liberty, this beautiful and terrible thing, needful to man as air, usable as earth, when it belongs at last to all, when it is truly in There came that time when he was appointed the consultant in poetry at the Library of Congress, and that is the position now called the Poet Laureate. So he was delighted. I mean, that was major recognition. Uh, he was the first African American to hold that post, and so he got a lot of attention. Everything started to come together. His collected poems came out. Uh, he began to get major reviews. I remember the review that Julius Lester wrote in the New York Times. Uh, the day after that appeared, I think maybe that was the happiest I have ever seen Robert in my life. Um, and so those last 10 years, the 10 years I knew him, were a happy time. Um, nevertheless, he had these, as he called them, personal demons that kept, uh, especially memories of the past, memories of his days in Detroit as a child and so forth, that kept coming back to him. He kept returning to in his work. Was his poetry more mm. based on a, a non-fiction, li life-lived 
sort of poetry? Some of it was, yes. Personal poetry, which of course is exactly what we mean when we talk about lyric poetry in the first place, uh, that the speaker has some interesting relation to the author. The author is free to make up materials, but also tends to stick to some of the basic facts of his own life. <clears throat> And Hayden had a difficult upbringing. Um, he was a child <clears throat> who uh, had very poor eyesight, and so he never participated in games. Uh, he was picked upon. Uh, his interest in poetry, which developed at that time, of course, made him an object of fun among many of the people who knew him, who didn't take poetry seriously. And I think that Hayden had a melodramatic life, a life that started in the ghetto, in which there was sort of a lot of fighting in his house, in his neighborhood, a lot of violence. He was especially <clears throat> uh, sensitive to violence, which of course made him a very interesting commentator on African American history. Uh, he wrote poems like Middle Passage. Eight bells, I cannot sleep, for I am sick with fear. But writing eases fear a little, since still my eyes can see these words take shape upon the page. And so I write as one would turn to exorcism. Four days scudding, but now the sea is calm again. Lastly, what is the, um, what do you want people to take from this interview? Well, I would uh, like to think that my colleagues and friends would read Hayden with um, more sense of how connected he is to the major writers of our time. I think that's often how it works in literary history, that a person will come, a writer will seem uh, hard to classify, hard to categorize, and so not as much attention will be paid to them. Gradually though, everything becomes configured or reconfigured and we see that that person was a central intelligence of his time and that what he was doing, what he was writing, uh, really reflects the zeitgeist, the spirit of the age and that um, he, uh, he deserves more careful study and more attention.